check us out on the web at www.fightcitynyc.com. My name is Ben Chan, and I'm your host. To my left, I've got marvelous Mariano Agni from fightnews.com. And next to Mariano, I have Aris, the Python, Pina, from Gotham Boxing, and also my comrade at arms at HBO Punch Zone. To my right, I have Furious. Francisco Guzman from BoxSaleMundial.com at uh, Yo 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 Yovan, the notorious Nagovin. We're going to start it off by talking about UFC 113, Machida versus Shogun 2. In the original fight at, at UFC 104, Le Leoto, the dragon Machida, fought um, Mauricio Shogun Hua for the light heavyweight championship. Machida won a narrow, controversial decision. Guys, what went down in the rematch? Well, there was no controversy this time. Uh, actually, Shogun Shogun took it to Machida like like no other. Um, he in the first fight he had a lot of trouble. Well, Machida had a lot of trouble with with Ruo because of his count, counter uh, punching abilities. Not only counter punching, but he was countering with leg kicks and and kicks to the ribs and and punches. You know. Um, um, fast punch combinations. So uh, Shogun pretty much bring the attack, and uh, Machida trying to break his attack by taking him down twice. But what ended up happening is that uh, eventually uh, Shogun's aggression took over, and he ended up hitting him with an overhand right after uh, Shogun uh, after Machida's um, left and took him down and, and pounded him out. Came out like a man on fire. Um, he he didn't, wasn't just strictly throwing leg kicks. He followed the leg kicks up with three, four punch combinations, getting Machida to back up. Uh, but he had a really good strategy in that he didn't overcommit. He pushed him enough to get him to back up to make defensive mistakes, but at the same time, he didn't leave himself very exposed to get countered. Uh, when Machida did throw the counter left, uh, Shogun came over the top with the big right hand, knocked him down, just completely brutalized him, followed it up with some ground and pound, uh, and it was a very definitive finish. Like uh, Francisco had said, there was nothing controversial about this. Very different sort of opposing styles. Josh Koscheck is an all-American wrestler. Uh, Paul Daly, he's a great striker, probably one of the best strikers in the welterweight division in the UFC. Uh, but it was a classic, you know, wrestler, ver grappler versus striker battle. And uh, Koscheck just completely imposed his will. He didn't really do much damage, but he controlled the fight the entire time. Uh, he he really dictated where the fight took place. He took Koscheck, he took Daly down repeatedly, made him fight off his back for almost the entire 15 minutes, and uh, Daly just really didn't have any choice to to be effective at that point he took he took a page out of gsp versus when gsp faced dan hardy he just kept taking him down he never let he never stood up with him because he knew that daily was 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 very dangerous and uh daily was so frustrated that he did something at the end of the fight we got a still shot of it on the uh on the screen right here francisco what happened well he walked over to him act like he was going to give him he was going to shake his hand and he sucker punched him <laughs> Uh, something that really cost his uh, UFC career because Dana White is not having it. He actually cut him from uh, the UFC. Yeah, bring on a guy now who's not going to disappoint. He's a middleweight prospect from New York City. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Kid Chocolate, Peter, P Peter Quillen. Would I applaud? <laughs> <laughs> What's Thank up, Pete? How are you doing? What's up, Pete? Thank you. How are you? So, so, Pete, you're a middleweight prospect. Your record, 21-0, 15 knockouts. You've got some big news. You're going to make a move. Yeah, i got a lot of popping the punches, and that's what the fans come to see you know, at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So you're from, you're, you're from you're rich, you were born in Chicago. I was born in Chicago. I was raised all my life in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I was born to a, um, a Morel Cuban. My father was born and raised in Cuba. So he met my mom there in Chicago, moved us to Grand Rapids, Michigan. That's what I know all my life, up until I was 18 when I moved to New York City. Right. Be going to um, you know Los Angeles and start to um, train with the new trainer, Freddie Roach, there. Wow, wow. So, so uh, what, what precipitated the, the move? Well, just the environment change, you know, um, the city, you know, boxing is kind of like not popping right now in New York right now. And it's pretty big in, in the West. Uh, it's got a lot of guys that I can get some sparring with, some good work out there. And just the, the environment is just set for a fighter. Chocolate comes from a, um, a late great Cuban. You know, you you always hear the um, the nickname Sugar being used, and you know all those sorts of names. Um, I thought about having like a guy that I have like similar heritage to, heritage to, like as a kid, Chocolate 
similar story coming to from Havana, Cuba to you know New York City to New York it was a, a big um, crowd sell, um, ticket seller here in New York, and um, it's kind of what I did. And, um, became a big seller here in New York, and um, you know that's a pretty big shoe to fill. But at the end of the day, it's not really trying to fill anybody's shoes. It's kind of like you know stepping in the, stepping in my own shoes, creating my own footsteps, and you know letting people know about my history in in the game. Right.